We know you so well, Cole. <laughs> Welcome to our DCD stand. Thank you. Now, this morning. Yes. Big announcement. How's it gone since the announcement? Good. I wish I uh, had a single minute to look at any of what anybody's wrote or said. So. <laughs> but everybody keeps telling me, Bill, that uh, your article is their favorite. <laughs> Excellent. I like it. We do try and get that with the news. But it is, I mean, have people realized how revolutionary this new concept is? Because I talk to people who've only got a bit of it. Yeah, I think, you know, this is a... This is an industry that is still transforming, and I think that we've got to do our job, and I think we're doing a disservice to this industry if we're not informing people about the benefits of what we're trying to do. I mean, the reality is, it's still five to $10 million per megawatt to build a data center. And that's the, you know, that's the average cost today. Um, and to me, the economics of that don't make sense if you're gonna do a three, four, five megawatt data center. You're just gonna go put that in somebody else's, uh, you know, somebody else's co-location facility yep. and be done with it. But, you know, do we want to do that? No, is that, is that, do we do that because the economics make sense to do that? Absolutely. So we're trying to reintroduce an, an economic model that allows you to build your own data center in buildings that you've already used. And this is just enterprise. I mean, the, 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 the cool thing, I think the, the, the coolest thing about the, the vapor IO chamber is that you also um, you also get to deliver your cloud capability and that workload at the edge. So as we move sort of from the cloud we know and we love today to sort of a, a tale of two clouds, we have another cloud that's all Internet of Things and Internet of Everything, and it's all about the network and it's all about the edge. Well, in that world, the reality is. Uh, your hyperscale guys are not going to be building their 100 plus megawatt data centers in downtown San Francisco or downtown New York or London. So we need to do more with less. And by you know more with less, um, I mean we're gonna have less space, we're gonna have less power in a single facility, but we also get to do more with more. And by more with more, I mean we're gonna have many more distributed data centers that are smaller in footprint but are disaggregated but connected. Uh, you know, you hear Facebook talk a lot about the disaggregated rack. I firmly believe in it. I see lots of innovation and lots of amazing things coming out of Facebook with Wedge and FBOSS and uh, Sixpack. These are fantastic capabilities and, and contributions. Um, but there's a layer beyond that that talks about the disaggregated data center. And I think Vapor.io is in a great spot to help the world achieve the economics of building out that disaggregated data center. And talk to me a bit about the, joining these together. What about latency? Latency? No, you just said, I'm going to bring this mic near. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, on the latency front, the, the, if you remember the old saying, the network is the computer from Sun Microsystems, um, they were right. Uh, yeah. They were just kind of a decade too soon. Um, but it is about being able to push data. Uh, there was a very smart gentleman by the name of Jim Gray. Jim Gray wrote this uh, book called The Fourth Paradigm. We talked about the fourth paradigm of humanity collecting so much data that it was no longer efficient for us to move the data layer up to the compute layer. We needed to move compute to the data. And I couldn't agree more with that. Uh, so it's, it is all about latency. I mean, the, the, the estimates are by 2020, we're gonna have 40 billion connected devices, 40 zettabytes of data. That is a ton of data to move around. So. Uh, we need to get that to the edge and to that consumer, as close to that consumer, um, as efficiently as possible. And I think, you know, we are uh, squarely focused on addressing how to do that in the same way. So what's next then for you? What, what do you take out of, uh, we've only been here a day, so I might, even, I might interview you again at the end of tomorrow. But what's come out of today for, uh, for you in terms of the big picture? Is there, we saw a lot of announcements this morning. What was the one that, that really struck you? Was the, was the one that, that, that you think is going to have more of an impact than anything else? Well, I mean, you know, outside of our own launch, which I'm you know, a big fan of, um, it was really good to see HP get in. I mean, I think HP does a lot to make this thing real in a very real way. Uh, you saw probably during Frank's keynote how he talked about you know the economies of scale and yeah. customization versus um, uh, uh, you know a tightly controlled 
uh, but very approachable solution. And I think you know, as we right size the investment into how you interact with the supply chain side of open compute, HP was probably for me the, the biggest contribution of the day. Cool. Thank you very much for popping back. Thank and we'll you. talk soon. Thank you.